another visit with all your friends from the Children's Bible Hour. Boys and girls for Jesus, this our earnest prayer. Boys and girls for Jesus, home and school and play. And everywhere we'll tell the world of life in Jesus. He is our song. There is all you need in Jesus, won't you come along? And now, Here's Uncle Charlie. Hi, Uncle Charlie. Hey-ho, and away we go on another fun visit with all your friends from the Children's Bible Hour. Sure, hope you can stick around for 30 minutes or so, and we'll promise to pack the time with lots of good stuff. Along with music from the choir, we'll hear from Laurelie with a cute song all about the thousands of animals God has created, which will be followed up by Uncle John with a question about why God created mosquitoes. Oh, they were really bad in most parts of our country this past summer. Uh, they're not so bad now that summer has come and gone, but hey, I'd still like to know the answer to that question. We'll also hear from the trio and Mark, some go along with the story music, and of course, a good story. Today we present a children's Bible Hour classic. It's one we've played often before, but it is also one for which we get many requests. Pigs will be pigs. It has a great lesson all about our sinful natures and what can be done about them. Well, let's get out the folder of riddles. Uh, yeah, it's still full. The mom of the Mulva Hill children in Garland, Texas, wrote to say, My children love your program. My eight-year-old son, Josiah, loves your jokes. Josiah came up with his own joke. What do you get when you pour water on a hamburger? Answer... What a burger. Now, Josiah's mom goes on to explain that there are hamburger restaurants in Texas called What a Burger, and that sounds like Water Burger. Do you Texans get that one? These come from Clarice, who lives and listens to us way up in Palmer, Alaska. Why does a seagull fly over the sea? Because if it flew over the bay, it would be a bagel. Oh, a bagel, get it, cute. Why did the ice cream cone read the newspaper? To get the latest scoop. Two more. From Angelica, or maybe it's Angelica, in Hillsboro, Oregon. In what country are the baseball scores always even? In Thailand. Why is the letter V like an angry bull? Because it comes after you. Okay, that's it. Moving right along to some great music by the choir. Hey, kids, do you ever need help? When the homework gets heavy, when brothers and sisters pester and tease, when problems come in the family, do you ever feel like you're about to drown in all those problems? Well, just remember, Jesus is a bridge over troubled waters. Jesus is a bridge over troubled waters. Jesus is a bridge over troubled waters.
choir for that good song. Oh, that is good to know. There will be troubles that come our way. We can't avoid them. But as Christians, we don't have to face them alone. We have the Lord Jesus right there to help us. All right, Laura Lee, we're ready for you to share your cute song all about the thousands of animals God has created. And right after she's finished, Uncle John, you come on along and share from the book 101 Questions Kids Ask About God. And uh, give us the question about why in the world God created mosquitoes. Thousands of animals know to the same. God made them all and knows everyone by name. If the guy is on the sparrow, then I know that he loves and cares and watches over me. So I will praise him for creatures that are small, feathered from the fly, chummy chimpanzees. That's a good song. God does care about us, and he cares about all the animals, too, including what I'm going to talk about right now. My question is taken from 101 Questions Children Ask About God with Answers for Busy Parents from the Bible, published by Tyndale. And by the way, we have copies of this particular book available here at Children's Bible Hour. If you'd like to know more, just write and ask us. The question, why did God make mosquitoes? The answer, when we're being attacked by mosquitoes, it's easy to wonder why God made pests and other animals that can harm us. When God created the world, it was perfect. Only after sin entered the picture did animals and human beings become enemies, causing humans to protect and defend themselves. So now, mosquitoes try to feed off of us. They, in turn, become food for birds and bats, and in the future, in the new heaven and the new earth, animals won't hurt people or each other. Isaiah 11, 6 through 9. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will lie down together, and the leopard and goats will be at peace. Calves and fat cattle will be safe among lions, and a little child shall lead them all. The cows will graze among bears. Cubs and calves will lie down side by side, and lions will eat grass like the cows. Babies will crawl safely among deadly snakes, and a little child who puts his hand into a nest of adders will not be hurt. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. And as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Back to you, Uncle Charlie. Thanks, Uncle John. Next summer when I'm out in the garden picking beans, I'll remember that answer as I kill the poor mosquitoes that God created. Now, let's move on to some more music. This coming Wednesday, September 18, kids all over these United States of America who are in junior high, high school, and some even in elementary school will be gathering around their school's flagpole to pray for themselves, their school, for this nation. It's see you at the poll time when we use the freedoms that we enjoy as Americans to pray to our God where we want to and when we want to. 
This is a freedom given to us by our Constitution and our founding fathers many years ago, and it's a freedom we want to use, not lose. Mark, come and sing a good song about the freedoms we have in this land of ours, will you? God has led this nation, rich as men are best. He alone can bless us with freedom that will last. A monument to freedom, the land of liberty. Lord, bless and guide this nation. It's faith and hope restored. May we With Mark's song in mind, let's take time to pray for our country and for the young people of our land who will be gathering this coming week. Jesus, we do thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy here in these United States, but we're sorry that prayer has been taken out of the public schools, and so we pray for our nation today. We pray for those young people who this coming week will be exercising their freedom as they gather around their school flagpoles to pray. May they do so as free Americans, unashamed to name the name of Christ and to call on you in prayer. We pray too for our friends in other lands, some in countries where they do not enjoy the freedoms we have. Thank you for this time together, in Jesus' name. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. A good song to follow prayer time by our trio, Katie, Tammy, and Christy, all about the God who answers our prayers. God answers
Are you using our daily devotional keys for kids? If not, you're missing out on something very special. Copies of the September-October issue are still available. If you're using the September-October issue, get your request in the mail soon for the November-December issue so we can get it to you by the 1st of November. We do appreciate it if you get your request in early. Just be sure, be sure to let us know which book you want, the September-October or the November-December issue. And remember, we don't have a mailing list for Keys for Kids. It must be requested every two months if you want to keep getting it. That way we know it is used, we know it is wanted. A reminder that Keys for Kids is free for the asking, one copy per family. Help with printing and postage expenses, much appreciated, but not necessary. Write today for either the September, October, or November, December Keys for Kids. And be sure to give us your full name, your full address, and your zip code. And one other thing I want to mention. In a few moments, we'll have the good story, Pigs Will Be Pigs. This story, along with five other great stories, is available on one of our story cassettes. There's a small charge. If you're interested in having it, just write for ordering information for the story cassette, Pigs Will Be Pigs, and other stories. Here's where to write. Children's Bible Hour, Box 1, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49501. That's Children's Bible Hour, Box 1, Grand Rapids, Michigan, the zip is 49501. One more story, and I just know it's one you'll want to listen to over and over again. In fact, that's true about all the stories on this cassette. I hope you'll listen and invite others to listen as well. Although this story will put a smile on your face, it will also teach a good lesson. The story... Pigs will be pigs. Billy and his sister Sally have just moved to the farm from the big city. All they know about farm life is what they've seen from the window of the family car. Oh, they really love living in the country, though. And already, Dad has bought a cow whom they call Molly. <laughs> And they have some chickens, of course. Sally thinks they're the cutest things. She just loves to gather the eggs. <laughs> Billy and Sally have joined the local 4-H club. And as their first project, they have decided to raise a pig. And their pig has just arrived in a crate on the back of a farmer's truck. As our story begins, the truck is pulling out of the driveway. Billy, Sally, Mom and Dad are standing around the wooden crate discussing what to do with the pig. Oh, isn't our pig darling, Mother? Boy, what a swell pig. One pig looks just like another one to me. Why didn't you children decide to raise chickens or goats instead of a smelly pig? Our pig is going to win the 4-H club prize. You'll see. What shall we call him, Sally? Her, not him. Something pretty, um, like, like Annabelle, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Annabelle's a nice name, but I'm not sure I it's quite like the it. name. I like it. Annabelle it is. <laughs> okay. Well, you children drag that crate over to the pig pen, let her out to root in the mud. Root in the mud? We don't want our pigs to live in that dirty pig pen. Oh, you don't? Well, there's no other place to put her. Do you suppose Annabelle's hungry, Mother? What should we feed her? Well, I'm not exactly sure. Dad probably knows. Mm, not really. You can find out at the feed store. And we'll save some of the garbage and add that to her food, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Garbage? Mother, do you want to kill her? <laughs> you know, you don't have a lamb in that crate, kids. You have a pig. And pigs like garbage and mud. It's just a part of their nature. I'll bet she'd rather have some nice corn instead of old garbage. <laughs> We're going to raise this pig scientifically. <laughs> and just what do you mean by that big word? You just wait and see. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Well, I have to get supper ready. When you hear the dinner bell, hurry in so your food won't get cold. Uh, put that pig in the pen now, children. Now that Mommy's dead, 
they're gone. Tell me the surprise. How are we going to raise Annabelle? Scientifically. We'll make a pet out of Annabelle. Why do pigs live in pig pens? Because people put them there. They have no place to go. Why do pigs eat garbage? Because they can't eat what they're fed or starve. Why do pigs root in the mud? Because they can't help it. I'll bet you're right. But what are we going to do, Billy? We're going to give Annabelle a chance to be neat and clean like any other animal. She'll be a real pet. Maybe we'll even be able to take her in the house sometimes. But she's so dirty now. We'll give her a bath. You won't get a bucket of soapy water and a brush. I'll pry the top boards off this crate and we can wash her right here. <laughs> Annabelle. The bath is on the hold of her. I'll get those ears a little better. Don't forget the little quick screw tail, Billy. Oh, Annabelle is a pretty pig. So white and nice. And she has the cutest little pink toes. There she is. As clean and bright as a new penny. What are you doing now, Sally? I'm using my pink belt to make a bow for her neck. Hold still, Annabelle. This pink bow will make you look just there. Don't you like it? Boy, I wish the 4-H club contest was on right now. I'll bet she could win it all right. Now what are we going to do with her? We can't put her in that filthy pig pen. I know. Let's drag the crate over to the rose garden. We'll open the gate and we'll put her in there. I think she'd like that. How do you think Mother will like it? She'll only be in there while we fix a nice clean bed for her down in the barn. Come on, help me to go. There you go, Annabelle. Close the gate, Sally. She acts so surprised to find herself in a beautiful rose garden. You see what I mean? She's so surprised to be treated like a human being, she doesn't know what to do. You don't think she'll hurt the flowers, do you, Billy? Of course not. There's the dinner bell. Now listen, don't tell Mother what we've done. After we eat, we'll bring her out here. Boy, will she be surprised. <laughs> Hurry up, Dad. We want to show you and Mom what we've done with Annabelle. Okay, okay, but what's the rush? At least give me time to finish my coffee. You're finished, aren't you, Mom? Just one last bite. <clears throat> there, I'm finished. I'm glad you two cleaned up your plate so well tonight. We did that, so you wouldn't have any garbage for Annabelle. <laughs> Come on, Mom. We just can't wait for you to see Annabelle. Yeah, Dad can come as soon as he has his coffee. <laughs> All right, I'll be there. Okay, okay, let's see what you're so excited about. I thought you were going to show me what you've done with your pig. Why are you taking me to the... Oh, no! My rose garden! What happened? Uh-oh. Billy, where's Annabelle? You... You didn't put that pig in my rose garden. Oh, look at that mess. Bushes broken down, the plants rooted up. Billy, what on earth were you trying to do? Well, I, you see, we thought... Where is that pig now? She broke through the fence, I'll betcha. Oh, no. If she wanders out to the road, there'll be nothing left of her but sausage. Well, I don't see her down near the road. Oh, what's going on over there? Annabelle's gone, Dad. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Oh, Ed, look at my rose garden. Oh, Those children no. put that pig in my rose garden. Uh, whatever possessed you to put her in the rose garden, Billy? We thought if we didn't treat Annabelle like a pig, she wouldn't act like a pig. Mm. We gave her a bath, Mother, and I put on a pink bow around her neck. Oh, dear, what next? I have a feeling I know just where we'll find Annabelle. Where, Dad? Down in the pig pen where she ought to be. I'll bet you won't find her there. Oh. After getting cleaned up so nice, why would she want to go back in the mud again? Well, let's just go and see. What? 
Did I tell you? Oh! Look at her lying over there in the mud up to her ears. What a good time she's having. My pink bow! Oh, what a mess! All that work of scrubbing her for nothing. But why, Dad? Why would Annabelle go back and wall in the mud after we gave her a bath and put a pink bow around her neck? And put her in the rose garden, too. Because it's a pig's nature to wallow in the mud. Uh, look at that flock of birds flying over the barn. It's natural for birds to take to the skies. It's natural for a fish to take to the water and swim. And it's natural for a pig to wallow in the mud. Wouldn't there be any way to make a pig want to be clean and be a nice pet like other animals? Oh, there is a way, if it were only possible to do it. What's that, Dad? Uh, you see those frisky white lambs over there in the green pasture? Yeah, they look like snowballs bouncing down the green hill. <laughs> now, if one of those white little lambs found himself in that mud where Annabelle is having such a good time, what would he do? I think he'd cry and cry until somebody came to take him out. Mm, and why? I get it. Because it's against the lamb's nature to wallow in the mud. Exactly. Now, if you could take the, the little lamb's nature and, and put it in the pig, then the pig wouldn't want to go in the mud anymore. Aha. But he'd still be the same old pig. The same old pig, yes, but he'd have a new nature. And that would make all the difference in the world. Boys and girls are something like dirty pigs. Mother! Hey, well, in a way, I mean. How, Mother? Well, boys and girls do things they shouldn't do, like putting pigs in rose gardens, for instance. And they say things they shouldn't say, all because it's their nature to do sinful things. Boy, that's sure true. You see, we're all born sinful, therefore we sin. But when a child or anyone gives his heart and life to the Lord Jesus, Jesus gives that person a new nature, a, a clean heart, a heart that hates sin. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. So even though he looks the same as always, his habits change. He says the things God wants him to say. He does the things God wants him to do. Because Jesus has given him a new nature. That's right. Washing up the outside doesn't change the inside. It's a new heart that you need. And that new heart can only come from the Lord Jesus. Have you trusted him as your Savior and Lord? If not, do so today. If you need help, you write. We'll be glad to help you any way we can. Hey, don't forget that this story, Pigs Will Be Pigs, along with five other great stories, is on one of our story cassettes. Ask for information about Pigs Will Be Pigs, and we'll send ordering information to you. And when you write, if you have a problem, if you have a prayer request, if you'd like to know more about having that new heart, trusting Jesus Christ as Savior, you be sure to share that with us when you write. Here's our mailing address, Children's Bible Hour, Box 1, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49501. That's Children's Bible Hour, Box 1, Grand Rapids, Michigan. The zip is 49501. And when you write, do keep in mind that Children's Bible Hour is a listener-supported ministry. Goodbye now. God bless you. Thanks so much for listening. Music